All right, welcome. Uh, in this video, we'll take a look at a second order transient response of a RLC circuit. In fact, uh, I should clarify, we are not going to be looking at the exact response of this circuit. What we'll focus this video on is basically, if you have any circuit, how would you go about using your circuit analysis techniques we've learned before uh, to come up with the second order differential equation? Once we've come up with a second order differential equation, we want to put it in a standard form. And based on that standard form, we want to, we want to make uh, guesses as to uh, which uh, kind of, what kind of time domain response we'll see, whether it's underdamped, overdamped, critically damped, and so forth. So in this particular example, we will focus on the voltage across the capacitor. So we want to write the differential equation for the voltage across the capacitor. Okay, uh, let's start. Uh, in order to do that, we'll use our trusted Kirchhoff's voltage law. Uh, let's start at the bottom half of the circuit. We'll walk around the circuit in this particular clockwise direction. And according to Kirchhoff's voltage law, you basically, as you walk around the circuit loop, you write down the sign you encounter, the magnitude of the voltage source. So we see V in first. Next thing we see is plus VR. Next we see is plus VL. And then the final thing we see it plus VC and we end up at where we started. So Kirchhoff's voltage law says sum of all of that voltage is equal to zero. Uh, we'll, as we re rearrange this, we can basically write down VR plus VL plus VC is equal to VN. Right? Now, VR is by Ohm's law, voltage across the resistor is the same as the current times the resistance. The voltage across the inductor is L D I T T and the voltage across the capacitor is what we're interested in so we'll leave it as VC for now and the right hand side is V in uh, as well now what we're interested in is the current uh, I mean volts across the uh, capacitor now the current going through the capacitor is basically given as I is given as C D V C dt. So in this expression that we have, if we replace all the i's with c dvc dt, let's see what happens. So let's do that. So this i right here gets replaced with c dvc dt times r plus l. Well, that's i. So di over dt is equal to c d square vc dt square. So up here di dt gets replaced by c d square vc dt plus vc equals vn. Now we have a second order differential equation right here, uh, but it's not quite in the standard form. In order to make it a standard form, in order to make it a standard form, what we need is the coefficient of the second order term to be equal to one. That's this, uh, that's what the standard form of a second order differential equation looks like. So in order to do that, we'll need to uh, bo divide both sides by LC. So let's do that. So let's divide both sides by LC. So right here, I'm going to use a different ink and basically divide by LC throughout. Right, so if I have if I divide by LC, what I end up with is that goes to one. The C's go here, so my my differential equation basically becomes R over L d v c d t plus d square v c d t plus v c over LC equals V in over LC. All right, now so now I've uh, rewritten this uh, second order differential equation, uh, and we just rearrange the terms uh, so that we have the second order term in the first, and then we have a coefficient of the first order term, uh, the and then a coefficient of VC, and then the this right hand side. Uh, the right hand side, this right hand side right here is called a forcing function. So this is called a forcing function. In this particular case, the forcing function is not equal to zero, right? So if we solve this differential equation, uh, if you recall differential equation math class, uh, this particular uh, equation will have two solutions. One is called a particular solution. The particular solution is basically based on the forcing function. 
Then we have another solution of this particular differential equation where the left hand side is equal to zero. Uh, assu assuming that's the same as assuming that the forcing function is equal to zero, right? So uh, that particular solution is called a homogeneous solution. Now this particular differential equation does have a particular solution, but the homogeneous solution depends on a factor called the damping ratio or jeta. Uh, uh, in this particular case, since this is in the standard form, this term right here, r over l, is actually uh, called 2 jeta omega n. Okay, uh, this 1 over l c gives us the natural frequency of this circuit. Wow. Okay, so L and C, uh, be, since both of them are energy uh, storing device, they'll transfer energy from the inductor to the capacitor and capacitor back to the inductor. So if if the resistance was equal to zero and we took the voltage source, set the voltage source to zero, the energy would basically not be dissipated, but in fact just transferred from the inductor towards the capacitor, capacitor back to the inductor, and we would see the circuit just oscillate. Okay, in, the, in our case, we do have V in, we do have a particular value of resistor. So this 1 over LC is also, uh, that's the omega N square, right? So uh, in, in the case of the, uh, of the second order standard, in standard differential equation, we have R over L, which is 2 zeta omega N, 1 over LC, which is omega N square. So these two terms, the jeta, uh, in fact, the jeta determines how our particular circuit uh, will behave in the time domain, whether it will be under damped, over damped, or critically damped. Now, if there was just LC, there's no damping, there's just oscillation. Uh, but as soon as we introduce the resistor in that circuit, some of the energy as the inductor and the capacitor are passing energy back and forth amongst each other, adding a resistor in that circuit, what it will do is basically take away every time an oscillation happens, it takes away a little, little bit, little bit, little bit of that energy away and dissipates it in the resistor. So what we'll see is that the circuit will eventually, de uh, will eventually settle down. And how long it takes to settle down uh, and ho how that settling happens is basically uh, the response of the second order system. So in the first order system, so where we had only RL or RC circuits, uh, in the first order system, we basically just had a decay, either exponential charging of a capacitor uh, or a exponential decay of the energy stored in the capacitor on the resistors, or in the case of the inductor, we saw the current either exponentially charged up from initial value to a final value or exponentially decayed from a initial value to a final steady state value. Right. So in the case of first order circuit, all we had was decay. In this case of a second order circuit, what we have is on top of decay, we also have the potential of an oscillation. Okay. And how much oscillation, how we control it, basically is dependent on the values of the R, L, and C. And that is dictated by this. So, so R and C, C value gives us a particular value for jeta. And if jeta is greater than one, uh, we call that particular circuit a critically damped, sorry, if it's greater than one, we call that an overdamped circuit. If it is equal to one, we call that a critically damped circuit. And if it is less than one, we call that an underdamped circuit. So we'll have this particular differential equation as we try to solve it, since the right hand side is not equal to zero, we'll have a particular solution. And we'll have a homogeneous solution, which the solution is one of three has one of three looks, and one of the what what that look looks like is basically dependent on the value of jeta. Okay, so intuitively though, uh, in this circuit, so here's a transient uh, uh, transient, but intuitively, what ha what what happens to the voltage across the capacitor if we wait a long enough time after the transient has finally settled? So in other words, let's say the capacitor is now fully charged, uh, wh what does the voltage across the capacitor look like if I wait a long enough time uh, once the event has happened? So in this case, if I wait a long enough time, basically what I'm saying is T is really great. So DT square is infinite. So this is a really big number. So this term goes away. Then if I look at DVC over DT, again, DT is a really big number. So I've waited a long enough time. So the DT is a really big number. So this term also goes away. So I'm left with, if I wait a long enough time, VC divided by LC, 
the voltage across the capacitor divided by LC is equal to Vn divided by LC. In other words, in this particular case, the voltage across the capacitor will uh, basically charge up to uh, the input voltage Vn that we have. In the next video, I will show you a uh, circuit simulation using uh, national instruments uh, multi sim you can use any kind of uh, spice circuit simulator there are a lot of free ones out there but what i'll do is i'll show you a simple rlc circuit like this draw like this and we'll we'll explore uh, how this voltage across the capacitor changes uh, with time okay uh, so we'll try to get an intuitive understanding of what this particular differential equation means in terms of the time response we actually see for the circuit okay, by playing with values of R, L, and C. So we won't be solving this particular differential equation. Our goal was to just set it up uh, for now, uh, and that's where we'll leave it at that.